So let me ask you a question. If you had two people, one person who's incredibly successful financially, another person who's horrible with their finances, they're in debt and their lives a mess, and you had the opportunity to mimic one of them in your own life, which one would you mimic? Obvious answer, right? But is it? Obviously you say to yourself, yeah, I want to mimic, mimic that successful person, but are you doing that? That's what we're going to discuss today, every Friday. That's what we go over, how you can become more successful in your savings. First off, let me say, I always say this, banks don't care about you. The government doesn't care about you. It's up to you to take control of your financial future. On this channel, we have videos to get you out of debt and then help you save and retain your wealth. Because if you can transform your finances, I truly believe you can transform your life. So it's Friday, every Friday on this show, which I call the dollars dead. I do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We go over how to retain what you have. So you're not losing purchasing power. So how many times have you heard or read an article about Warren Buffett? Why? Because he's successful at what he does. So people want to mimic what he does in the past. I've had shows pointing out that the top 1% of people who have wealth own what? They own assets. If you've been watching this show enough, I want you to finish that sentence for me. They own assets. Of course, you need dollars to transact with your daily expenses, your rent, your mortgage, whatever it may be, cars, food, things for your kids, your parents, whatever it may be. Your transactional expenses, you need cash for that. Emergency savings, probably keeping that in cash. But what are you doing with the rest of your savings? What I want you to think is to think differently. You answered the question properly, but what are you doing? If you're looking at your savings account and you have way more than you need in your, than your emergency fund, are you keeping that in dollars? Because $100 today is not $100 six months from now. Uh, this week on Monday, I talked about how to prioritize your getting out of debt with some encouragement. And on Wednesday, I showed what I called the government is stealing from you. And I said that to wake you up because when there's inflation, interest rates are higher. So if you want to get a car loan or pay down your debt, whatever it may be, personal loans, it's more expensive for you. And we have inflation and it's been out of control for a while. Also with inflation, your wages go down. Look around, have housing prices gone up or down in the last couple of years? Obvious answer. Have cars gone up or down? Obvious answer. So if we have inflation and assets are going up and things are more expensive, well, how are you going to make ends meet? So I want you to realize that that top 1% that own assets, and that's what we talk about every Friday, why do they do that? Well, look at a chart over the last, I don't know, 50, 80, 100 years of real estate prices. Sure, they go up and down because markets are cyclical, but they go what's called up and to the right. They're constantly going up over a long period of time. Same thing with cars, same thing with everything. So if all these assets are shooting up in value, and instead of owning assets, you decide you'll just hold dollars, which on a chart are just kind of going sideways or down. I have videos showing over the last hundred years, the dollar has lost 99% of its value. Meanwhile, things like gold have shot through the roof. So I'm not talking about real estate, not talking about cars. We're talking about a simple way to diversify your savings. So let's go over the numbers because I've been doing this since February. Personally, I've been doing this for a very long time. I always have to say this isn't financial advice, but it's what I do. I buy assets with my savings like gold and silver. And for the last couple of years, cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin and Ethereum. You may believe in that. You may not believe in that, but those are assets and that's what the wealthy do. They hold those assets that go up in value. That's why during this time you might feel poorer. And you look around and you read articles about the rich getting richer. Why? Because they have assets. And when there's inflation, those things just keep going up in value. So here's what we do. We look at February's numbers when we started this last week and then this week on savings vehicles to show you if you were to save dollars in alternatives to just savings. So here we go. First up, I look at these three because I consider them cash or cash equivalents. A savings account, let's put the money in the bank. In February, 0.46 was the interest rate. That's horrible. Last week it was 0.45 and it's about the same because this is just updated once a month. Then we say, well, what if you got a three month CD? In other words, you'd lock up your money at the bank for three months. 
1.53 last week. Treasuries three month, 5.46. Treasuries are, you know, when you're essentially allowing the government to borrow money from you and they're giving you a rate. Now inflation is at 3.3 in May. So you're barely beating inflation with a treasury. Well, let's look at assets. Gold, February 2050, $2,050. Last week, 2,321. This week, 2,343. Significant change, right? That's what, what uh, well, 400 on 2,000 is 20%. Well, your savings didn't go up 20%. The savings rate is 0.45. Look at silver, $22 essentially in February. Now it's 29 36. Bitcoin was 43,000 in February, and it's very volatile. Crypto markets are extremely volatile. Last week it was 70,000. This week it's 66,000. Well, that's a 50% jump. Savings is 0.45. Ethereum, 22.99 back in February, 3,800 last week. Again, that's volatile. And this week it's 34.86. I don't know if you're familiar, but you can now buy ETFs spot ETFs for Bitcoin. It's essentially like owning Bitcoin. Well, I've got videos on that. It's not actually owning the physical Bitcoin, but you're investing in the Bitcoin. Ethereum has spot ETFs. It's been approved and they'll be out soon. Now look at these numbers. We look at inflation, which is still 3.3 in May, comes out once a month, and then 10-year treasury at 4.2, two-year treasury at 4.7. Why do we look at those? Because if the two-year is greater than the 10-year, which it is, that's called an inversion. What's an inversion? An inversion typically means that you can get a better rate of return on a short-term two-year than you can on a 10-year. So what? That doesn't make sense. Think about it. Typically, if you're willing to lock up your money for a longer period of time, like in a CD, you're going to get a higher rate of return. That tells you that something's wrong in the markets. And every time we've had inversion of the two and 10-year treasury, statistically, it's been shown that we're either in or going into a recession where you could lose jobs, etc. all kinds of chaos. So I appreciate you watching. Please watch the videos on Dollar is Dead every week because I don't want you walking away from these videos saying to yourself, gosh, that guy looks like a cross between Elmer Fudd and Mr. Clean. No, I want you to walk away and say, you know what? That kind of makes sense. I hold $100 and a year later, I can't buy the, as much stuff because the prices have gone up. Maybe I should hold other things like gold or silver, which by the way, you can just buy gold and silver ETFs. You don't have to go down to the local gold shop and buy an ounce or a gram of gold. You can do that, but there's pretty high transaction costs. And I actually have a video on how to buy and sell gold. But through ETFs, you just log into your broker, buy it, you've got it. Sell the ETF, buy the ETF, easy. Same thing with Bitcoin now and about to be Ethereum. So if you want to diversify like I do, to try to hedge against inflation, meaning I want my dollars to go up in value over time, not down. So I don't hold many U.S. dollars. That's why I say the dollar is dead. Thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful, and I hope you can join me on this journey of helping people get out of debt and save for their future. Have a great day.